Alright, if you're trying to break into the cloud or move up in your career, you might be wondering which role is actually right for you. Hi, I'm Lucy, an ex AWS Solutions Architect, and in this video, I'll be breaking down 15 of the most common jobs in the cloud. If you've ever Googled cloud jobs, you've probably seen dozens of job titles that all sound the same. Cloud engineer, cloud architect, solutions architect, cloud support engineer, and the list goes on. It can be really confusing to figure out what each role does, which ones are entry level, and which of them have good future growth. And so my goal for this video is to help you make sense of it all. Hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a clear idea of which one you should focus on. I'm excited. Let's get into it. Starting off with technical roles. Role number one is a cloud support engineer. Now, this is one of the most common entry level points into the industry and where many people start off with. In this role, you'll help customers resolve technical cloud issues, making sure systems stay secure, reliable and high performing. You can think of this role as tech support, but focused entirely on cloud services. Instead of helping someone fix a printer or reinstall software, for example, you'd be helping them with their cloud issues. Day to day, this may involve troubleshooting service outages, fixing misconfigurations and addressing performance concerns. The skills needed to become a cloud support engineer include a solid understanding of core cloud services, networking fundamentals, Linux and Windows administration, as well as the ability to work calmly under pressure. Because trust me, the role is going to be very fast paced, especially at a company like AWS. You'll be managing dozens of support tickets a day and communicating with customers through phone, chat and email. This role is definitely not the highest paying compared to all the other technical cloud roles out there, but it's a pretty solid starting point with a lot of growth potential. Many people stay in this role for around two to three years and then move on to positions like solutions architect, cloud architect or specialist engineer roles. Which brings us to role number two, the solutions architect. Now, I might be biased, of course, but this role is one of the best in the cloud and I'll be telling you why very shortly. A solutions architect is someone who designs cloud solutions that meet customers' needs. These solutions should be scalable, cost-effective, secure, reliable, and performance efficient. In this role, you'll sort of act like a trusted advisor for your customers, helping them make the best technical decisions for their business. Day to day, you'll be meeting with clients, gathering requirements, and then designing architectures to bring those requirements to life. Now, this role is my favorite because it's a perfect mix between tech, engineering, and sales, three of the most valuable skill sets in today's day and age. The skills you need for this role include a deep knowledge of cloud services, strong problem solving and communication skills, as well as the ability to align technical solutions with business objectives. Because of this, you'll see the solutions architect role usually listed as a senior position. However, companies like AWS also offer entry-level positions like the associate solutions architect and solutions architect intern role. In fact, when I joined AWS fresh out of university, they provided me with one year of solutions architect training before I was expected to face customers. This role pays quite well and offers strong career progression. For context, I was paid around $130,000 at AWS. And then when I landed my job with Google Cloud, they offered me $200,000 which by the way, I ended up turning down. Not because I don't like the role, but because I wanted to do YouTube full-time instead. So after three to five years as a solutions architect, many move into senior architect positions. And after five to seven years, even leadership positions like becoming a CTO. Moving on to role number three, we have the cloud engineer. This role is all about building, configuring, and maintaining cloud infrastructure so that it's secure, scalable, and efficient. As a cloud engineer, you're the one making sure your company's cloud environment is ready for applications to run smoothly. So on a typical day, this could mean setting up networks, configuring compute resources, and using automation to deploy infrastructure quickly and consistently. As for the skills, you'll need a strong understanding of networking, scripting, and experience with infrastructure as code tools like Terraform or CloudFormation. Hands-on experience with one major cloud platform is also important. The cloud engineer role typically pays quite well and often leads to rewarding senior technical positions in cloud and DevOps engineering. Moving on to role number four, we have the DevOps engineer. A DevOps engineer is someone who bridges the gap between development and operations with a strong focus on automation, collaboration, and CICD, which stands for continuous integration and continuous delivery. In this role, your goal is to make software releases faster, more reliable, and easier to manage. Day to day, you might be building and maintaining CI CD pipelines, automating infrastructure deployments, managing containerized applications, as well as setting up monitoring and alerting systems. This role is similar to a cloud engineer in that you work with cloud infrastructure and automation, but the focus is on the entire process of getting the code from development into production, rather than just what's in the cloud. To become a DevOps engineer, you of course need to understand DevOps. 
This includes skills like proficiency in scripting languages, experience with containerization tools like Docker, and knowledge of CI CD platforms like Jenkins. It's definitely a lot to learn, but DevOps engineers are high in demand with competitive salaries. By the way, the reason I'm not providing exact salary ranges for each role is because it really depends on where in the world you're located. You can check out platforms like Glassdoor and Levels.FYI for accurate estimates. All right, let's speed things up and move on to role number five, which is a Site Reliability Engineer, or SRE for short. An SRE ensures that systems run reliably at scale by combining software engineering with operations. Day-to-day, -day, you're monitoring uptime, automation, automating responses to incidents, and improving system resilience. The skills required include programming, automation, familiarity with monitoring tools, as well as incidents management. Growth potential is pretty decent. You can choose to go into leadership roles like leading SRE teams, or you can stay technical and become a principal engineer. Role number six is an AI ML engineer, which in my opinion is one of the most future-proof jobs out there right now. An AI ML engineer that works in the cloud designs, builds, and deploys machine learning models using cloud tools and infrastructure. Think Amazon Bedrock, Azure Machine Learning, and Google Vertex AI. Day to day, you might be training models, working with large data sets, and integrating AI features into a company's applications. Some of the basic skills you'll need include Python, machine learning frameworks, data engineering basics, and cloud AI services like SageMaker, Bedrock, Vertex AI, and the list goes on as the list of AI services expands. It's definitely not an entry-level role, but the growth potential is huge, with unlimited opportunities in cloud expansion, AI research, and machine learning. Now, if you're interested in building your AI foundations and potentially land a job like this, let me share with you an exciting opportunity for you to build your skills fast. So I partnered up with a company called OutSkill to bring you free access to their three-day AI mastermind happening this weekend. It's a 16-hour live workshop where you'll learn how to automate workflows, build AI agents, and generate images and videos all by using practical, hands-on tools. Normally, this training costs $900, but as a Tech with Lucy subscriber, you can grab a free seat using the link in the description. When you sign up, you'll unlock content worth around $5,000, including a prompt bible, a roadmap to making money with AI, and a personalized AI toolkit builder. Their workshops have helped 4 million people globally, and I've personally attended them myself. Their sessions run on Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. EST, so make sure you mark it on your calendar and join the WhatsApp community for updates. Okay, let's get into cloud job number seven. Cloud job number seven is a FinOps specialist. So a FinOps specialist focuses on managing and optimizing cloud spending. In this role, you'll track usage, identifying cost-saving opportunities, and work with teams to optimize your cloud resources. To become a FinOps specialist, you'll need skills in cost analysis, budgeting, understanding cloud pricing models, as well as strong stakeholder communication. Over time, this role can lead to senior FinOps leadership positions, cloud financial strategy roles, or consulting opportunities. Coming to role number eight, we have a cloud security engineer. A cloud security engineer designs and implements security measures to protect cloud environments. Day to day, what you'll do is manage identity access, encryption, threat detection, and compliance requirements. This role requires skills in security best practices, cloud security tools, compliance frameworks, and incidents response. With experience over time, you can progress into more senior security roles or moving to leadership roles in cybersecurity. Cloud role number nine is the data engineer. A data engineer builds and manages data pipelines so that information flow reliably for analytics and machine learning. In this role, you'll design ETL processes, optimize data storage, and integrate multiple data sources. The skills required include SQL, Python, data modeling, and experience with cloud data services like Redshift, BigQuery, or Snowflake. Career opportunities from here often lead to data architecture, analytics engineering, as well as AI and machine learning engineering roles. Role number 10 is a cloud architect. A cloud architect is often confused with a solutions architect, but the cloud architect role is more focused on implementation of cloud solutions. Cloud architects work with customers to come up with a statement of work, which details all the things that needs to be implemented. It's quite a hands-on role where you'll need to build solutions for customers, whereas the solutions architect role is more focused on the initial stages of coming up with the blueprints. The skills needed to become a cloud architect is definitely programming, cloud knowledge, as well as hands-on experience with the cloud. Knowledge of other technologies is also strongly preferred because as a cloud architect, you'll need to implement the cloud solution with the rest of the customer's environment. The growth potential of a cloud architect is pretty strong as well because the skills are very versatile. You can become a senior software engineer later on in the future, helping your company improve its products, or you can become a practice manager where you're in charge of a team of cloud architects. 
Okay, let's now move on to the business-focused cloud roles. Role number 11 is the cloud sales representative. A cloud sales rep is responsible for selling cloud services and solutions to businesses. Day-to-day, you'll have a lot of calls to meet with potential prospects, prepare proposals, and close deals. This role requires strong communication skills, the ability to understand customer pain points, as well as a working knowledge of cloud services, although the technical stuff can be learned on the job. If you're good at tech sales, you could advance to account executive positions or potentially lead your sales team. Role number 12 is a cloud product manager. A cloud product manager oversees the development and delivery of cloud-based products and services. In this role, you'll define product roadmaps, gather customer feedback, and coordinate with engineering teams to deliver solutions. For example, if you're a product manager for a service like Amazon S3, you'll be talking to multiple stakeholders and users in order to continuously refine the service. To become a cloud product manager, you'll need skills in product management, customer research, and understanding the cloud market. A couple of years into this role, and you can step into senior product leadership or even start your own product-focused company. Cloud role number 13 is the technical account manager. A technical account manager works closely with customers to ensure that they're getting the most value out of their cloud investment. Day-to-day, you'll manage accounts, solve problems, and guide customers on best practices. The skills required for this role include account management skills, strong customer relationship building, as well as some technical knowledge. Over time, you could move into senior technical account manager positions positions, lead customer success teams, or transition into solutions architecture. All right, cloud role number 14, our second last role, is a cloud trainer. A cloud trainer teaches individuals and organizations how to use cloud technologies effectively. Pretty much just think of them as a teacher or a personal coach that helps you succeed in the cloud. Day to day, what you'll do is create learning materials, deliver training sessions, and stay up to date with new services. You'll need deep technical knowledge, public speaking skills, and experience in instructional design. This role is great for those of you who really enjoy teaching and also coming up with your own curriculum. And in terms of future growth potential, I've seen a lot of cloud trainers end up quitting their jobs to start their own training business. Last but not least, role number 15 is the developer advocate. A developer advocate acts as a bridge between the product team as well as the developer community. In this role, you'll create technical content, run workshops, speak at events, and share the feedback from the developers to the internal product teams. The skills required to become a developer advocate include strong communication skills, presentation skills, technical knowledge, and just general overall interest and involvement in the cloud community. This role can grow into senior advocacy positions as well as community management. I've also seen quite a few developer advocates go on to become CEOs or entrepreneurs just because of the skills that they end up developing. And there you have it, all the major cloud roles out there explained clearly to you. If you want to build the technical skills for some of these roles, make sure you check out my learning platform, Zero to Cloud. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.